Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I, that's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Harding, Counterspy, calling Washington. United States Counterspies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Postal Pirates, another Counterspy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi is America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi is best? And now, to Counter Spy. In one of New York City's larger post office branches, it is mid-afternoon and fairly quiet. Then... Through the street door comes a remarkably pretty girl of perhaps 27. Her eyes are surprisingly cold and searching until they reach window number five. What'll it be, miss? Oh, hello. Hello, handsome. A hundred threes. Five days in a row, a hundred three cent stamps. So you do a lot of mailing. I've got a lot of friends. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I can see the reason why. Oh, I didn't know postal clerks could make such pretty speeches. Oh, there are a lot of other things we can do, too. that why they keep you locked up in a cage? <laughs> if you'd like to find out, they let us out at five. Feeding time for the animals? Oh, you might say. Well, I always did like animals, especially big, burly ones. Well, this one feeds at the Shamrock across the street from here. Oh, there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that looks like a place where they feed the animals. Okay, I'll pick you up here at five. Here's the last of the dishes, baby. Put them in the sink. We'll let them soak. All right. Now, isn't my apartment, even with the dishes, better than a public restaurant? Hmm? Baby, I even love the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we've wined and dined, how about a name? Not that I'd object to calling you baby permanently. I was wondering when you'd ask. It's Kathy. It's nice. Goes good with mine, Jimmy. Is that all? No more questions? Well, uh, my mother taught me never to look a gift horse in the mouth. Horse? <laughs> well, I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah? Come here. Well? You know, post office isn't only work. It's a game, too. Yeah, I've played it. It goes something like this, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, don't crush. I'm, I'm fragile. Oh, who reads labels? It's a waste of time. You know, I, uh, I might have a husband. Well, if you do, he's a chump to let you out of his sight. He's a chump. Oh, you have one? O only on paper. We're separated. He pays the bills and prays for an excuse to divorce me. You're trying to give him one? Don't be silly. I said he pays the bills. Are you, uh, bothered? Yeah, a little. It marks you handle with care. Uh, I thought you said you didn't read labels. Try closing your eyes. That's an idea. Come here. Oh, remember, fragile. Oh, Jimmy. Oh. My. What a pretty picture. Oh, Nick. What? What's the idea of busting in here? Well, me and Frank just got a lovely snapshot for my album. 
You got it all right, didn't you, Frank? Right here from the doorway with my trusty camera. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, what is this? Evidence, big boy. That's why I brought my boy Frank and his camera along. We're waiting a long time for my darling wife, Kathy, to step out of line. Nick, you got this all wrong. I I I just met him today. Fast worker. And if I got it wrong, the camera hasn't. Right, Frank? A perfect shot. You, you're Kathy's husband? Sure. I'm not sore. You've done me a favor. Well, you're not going to pull a stunt like this on her. Take your hands off me. Let go. Take it easy, mister. I make two of you. Yeah? Then this will cut you down to size, big boy. Jimmy, look out. A gun. Get it away from him. Okay, Nick. Now I got the gun. Now get out of here. Are you kidding? What you took, I can take back. No. What? What? Dead, Jimmy. Holy mackerel. Dead? You're a little late dropping the gun, big boy. But how could... I, I didn't mean... It's aim. done. He's dead. Oh. Well, we'll have to call the police. Jimmy, don't be a fool. If Nick's body is found here, what do you think this mess will look like to the cops? It was an accident. <laughs> the cops will love that one. Listen, Jimmy. Nick taught me a lot of things besides what a heel he was. Nick was in the rackets. In the rackets? Yeah, kid. He had a lot of enemies. He's found beside a road. Nobody will ask twice who did it. What are you figuring, Frank? That this sets you up to take over Nick's racket? Yeah. I can get hold of a couple of boys to help me get rid of Nick, and then we'll all keep quiet. I slip into Nick's spot. You two are in the clear. How do you like it, Kathy? Okay, Frank. But, Kathy, it's an awful chance. Look, Jimmy, look, I like your style, and I don't want you wasting it in some jail cell while I'm around. You beat it now and let Frank take care of things. You stay away from me until I call you at home. And that won't be long, honey. That won't be long. Hello? Jimmy? Kathy? Kathy, I've been, I've been staying home every night. I thought you'd never call. What happened? Did Frank? He said it's all right, but he wants to see you. Half an hour in front of the shamrock. This is David Harding. To counter spy agents in Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and Boston. Continue investigation, parcel post theft ring. Take no action, make no arrests, but lay plans to close in on known members of Ring at a moment's notice. Special attention, Boston field office. Have Harry Peters telephone me as soon as possible. Hey, Frank, what did you want to see me for? Where are we driving? Everything's all right, isn't it? For me, Jimmy, yeah. For you, only maybe. Maybe? Depends on how you play ball. What, what are you driving at? Photograph I took. Uh, not of you and Kathy, but of you and Nick. Nick? Well, what does it show? Uh, take a look. Huh. All right. Looks like I killed him deliberately. I cut it perfect. With Nick on the floor and you over him holding the gun. <laughs> if that picture should show up when Nick is found, boy, oh, brother. What do you want? Money? From a postal clerk. Then what do you want? I took over Nick's racket. A racket that's worked in the post office. The post office? Yeah. Nick had guys in post offices, uh... Stealing valuable packages. What, just just walking out with them? No, 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 no. After people insure their packages, our guys relabel them. Send them to a special address. That's what you want me to do? Let's say this photo wants you to do it. And, of course, Kathy. You don't want to get mixed up in no murder rap. Kathy? Well, kid? All right, Frank. 
I guess there's nothing else I can do. Attention, statistical department. If Mr. David Harding is there, will he please take a rush phone call on extension 61 from Mr. Harry Peters, extension 61. Hello, Peters. I've been waiting to hear from you. How's it going in Boston? Pretty well, Dave. We've got a line on all the small fry here. We're ready to pick them up on a moment's notice. That's good. I've got the same reports from Chicago, Detroit, and Philadelphia. But what's bad is the racket started in New York, too. Oh, great. As nearly as I can make out, this parcel post theft ring has been in operation about three months. They've stolen over a million dollars in merchandise already. We pick up the small fry and the big shots just start over again. I agree, Dave. I'm going up to New York. I want you to meet me there. We'll take up the investigation together. Fine. When? Tomorrow. And you can spend the time in between reading postal regulations. Good. I'll have something else for you. Your credentials as Harry Gordon, postal clerk. Uh, Jimmy. Yeah, what now, Harry? My, uh, daily stamp reports and registration book. Will you check them to see if they're right? Well, after three weeks, you ought to know yourself. My... Just like to make That's sure. That's my luck, always getting stuck with substitutes. Guy's got to make a living. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry, how are you? Let's see. This post office work isn't so good for a guy's disposition. Hmm? Forget it, I got trouble. Yeah, your books are okay. Thanks. Customer at your window. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mister? I'd like to have this package insured, please. For how much? Well, they're nylon stockings. You better make it uh, $150. Okay. How are you doing, Peter? Okay, so far, Dave. Penny Arcade, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Hey, you are, mister. Your receipt. Will it get there all right? Sure. Be right on time. Don't worry about it. Shooting, mister. Like to try a load yourself? Uh Uh-uh. Pinball's my speed. The other side of the arcade. Come on and watch. Okay. Any news on Jimmy Morrison, Dave? We traced the package I mailed that Jimmy Morrison relabeled. It went to 428 Front Street, a warehouse. A warehouse? Maybe the central warehouse for the whole racket. Well, here's your pinball machine. Watch me, boy. One thing more. We picked up another outside contact. Your man, Jimmy Morrison, frequently meets a blonde bombshell. 46,000. Yeah. Blonde bombshell, hmm? Want me to follow that? She, uh, she may be the big shot we're looking for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not so good that time. Just watch this one. Morrison has lunch with the blonde in the main dining room of the Shamrock every day. Okay, I'll catch him tomorrow. At the Shamrock. Kathy, I tell you, we can't keep it up. Look, Jimmy, we have to. Besides, don't you like spending the extra dough on me? Oh, honey, if it wasn't for you. Why did Mick have Forget to... that name, he Jimmy. He could have gotten that divorce, then we could have... What's the matter? A guy coming toward us. Well? Harry Gordon, he works with me at the post office. Oh. Hello, Jimmy. 
I almost missed you way over here in the corner. Hi, Harry. Well? Well what? No knockdown. This is Kathy Thomas. Hi. Hello. Mind if I join you? Thanks. What's on your mind, Harry? You want me to check your books again? No. In fact, uh, this is kind of private. Jimmy's got no secrets from me. Oh, like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. This might be embarrassing. I'm blushing. Speak your piece. What is it, Harry? Okay. Here it is in three little words. I want in. Is that a riddle? Let's cut the sparring, Jimmy. I got eyes and you got careless sometimes. Look, look, I don't... Wait a minute, Jimmy. Go on, Harry. Let's hear your spiel. Okay, sister. Your boyfriend here has been making funny with the post office. Packages come in from dress goods houses, jewelers, appliance dealers, and what have you. Junior here gets them, relabels them, and five will get you ten. They wind up where they shouldn't. You've got an awful big nose. Things could happen to it. Easy, Jimmy, easy. He's a bright boy. Harry, I uh, suppose you could do what Jimmy's doing. I, uh, take it I'm in. Yes, if you have to be told. Kathy. It's all right, Jimmy. Harry, we'll get in touch with you. Don't keep me waiting. I'm impatient. In a day or two. No, we'd like to have our dinner. Sure thing. Goodbye, Miss Thomas. Jimmy, my apologies. I had you figured about five sizes too big. So long. Kathy, I don't like it. You declared him in. Yeah, I did, but Frank has the final word. You think Frank will turn him down? He might. And in that case, I wouldn't want to be in Harry Gordon's shoes. In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy, brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance, ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less? When Pepsi is best. Yes, families like yours and mine. Families all over America. They're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Tastes terrific when you're hot. More and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi is best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. It's just after 5 p.m. in Midtown, New York. From a tall marble building, Peters, alias Harry Gordon, postal clerk, emerges to join the homeward-bound throng. A man sidles up to him. Hello, Harry. What? Who are you? The guy you wanted to see, Kathy told me. Oh. Fast work. I've got my car. We'll go for a drive. That way, conversation's private. Okay, Harry, stay on the West Side Highway now. It's well car. Handles nice. Yeah, I know. I like to drive. Except in city traffic. And why you wanted me to take the wheel? One reason. And the other? <laughs> You're a bright boy, Harry. Thanks. Yeah, the kind of a guy we'd like to have if we were taking on new guys. You're not? We don't like volunteers. We like to pick out our own boys and hold them to us good and tight. I stick like glue where there's dough. Glue melts. 
he prefers something more solid. Now, you might be a right guy. Thanks. Or a stoolie. I can't sing a note. Maybe even a cop. I haven't got flat feet. Maybe, but we never take chances. Hey, slow down, will you? You're going too fast. I like speed. Now, don't get cute and try to get a cop on her tail. A lot of power in this motor. Slow down, I'll blast your head off. I thought you'd show a rod sooner or later. Okay, I showed it. Now, slow down. What for? Right now, this is the safest way I can drive. Oh, you crazy fool, look out! Close, huh? You don't slow down, I'll... Shoot. Then what happens to his boat? The needle's pushing 70. 75. 80. You kill us both. That's better than you killing me. Look at the needle. 85. It's a car! Slow down. Toss the gun on the floorboard. Okay, okay. Now slow it, slow it. Turn out all your pockets and open the jacket wide. I don't want you to cross yeah, me. Sure, sure. I ain't got another gas. Hey, a police siren, a block behind. Cops, now we are in the stew. Maybe. That's a good boy. No more guns. Right, boy, we stop, but what are you going to do about those cops coming? You'll see, tough guy. Get out. Hey, what is this? Only one plain clothes guy in that patrol car. Peters, I've been tailing you since you got into this car. What a race you staged. You pulled a gun on me, Chief. The only way I could make him drop it was to speed up. Chief, who are you guys? Counter spies. Sorry it turned out this way, Dave. It practically tips our hand. Well, I'd rather have our hand tipped than you dead. We'll move in right away. We'll hand this fellow over to the police and then go right down to pick up Jimmy and the girl. Well, Peter, our friend Jimmy's not here. Yeah. Looks as if he left in a hurry. He can't possibly know about the chase and... Hey, Peter. This magazine opened to page seven. One of those true crime story magazines. Open to an article about the capture of Professor Horn. The case we handled, Dave. Jimmy Morrison evidently been reading up on criminals. More than that, Peters. Here's a photograph taken at police headquarters that time. And there you are in the background. What? Hey, lucky my name isn't given in the caption. Still, this picture's enough to tell Jimmy Morrison you're not the postal clerk you pretended to be. It's a cinch he saw this and lit out. He'll head for the girl first. He's soft on her. We'll go to her place, then. If she's not there, then we go to the warehouse on Front Street, where the gang's been forwarding its loot. This is David Harding. Attention, counter-spy agents, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, and Philadelphia. Circumstances force us to move now in postal theft investigation. Carry out all raids according to plan. Pick up all members of the ring you can lay your hands on. We will conduct raid on Main Warehouse here in New York. Act on this order immediately. Kathy. Kathy. Jimmy. I thought Frank told you never come near this warehouse. Forget Frank. We've got to get out of here. What are you talking about? That guy, Harry Gordon. He's really a counter spy. Counter spy? I saw his picture in a magazine. Oh. Come on, Kathy. We haven't got any time to lose. Then maybe. Kathy, that last. Oh. Nick. What goes, Kathy? Counter spies. Jimmy says they're onto us. What? Nick. I thought I'd killed you. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all in a jam now together. A frame-up. Look, Jimmy. You jockeyed me into it. Yeah, kid. And you're staying in. Nick, forget the gun. We've got to stick together. That one loaded with blanks, too, Nick? Try it and see, kid. Stop it. The counter spies could be right outside this minute. Well, I'm putting it together, Kathy. At that time, you telephoned me. I never gave you my number. So you didn't. 
You didn't even know my last name, then. That's right. It was a frame. Nick played dead, so you'd be forced into this setup. Your post office is in a nice district. Good merchandise. There, you got it all. Yeah, but the funny thing is, Kathy, you didn't have to frame me. I'd have done anything you wanted me to. But I'm not doing anything more. Jimmy, we've got to get away from here. The three of us are in this now. Wrong addition, baby. Huh? Just two. You two. What? Get over there. Both of you. He's crossing us, Jimmy. You and me. How does it feel, Kathy? Don't be a sap. Do something. All Jimmy's going to do is die. Now, stand there. I got a letter to type, and I'm strictly a one-finger guy. And I don't want to use it on the trigger. Yet. All of our agents stake out around the warehouse, Peter? Yes, Dave, and we're in luck. Oh, how? Conway tells me Jimmy Morrison went into the warehouse just a little while ago. Good. Maybe a meeting of the brains of the mob. What's that? Shots from inside the warehouse. Let's go. Why, do you men cover the main floor of the warehouse? Peters and I'll take the office upstairs. Peters. Holy. Jimmy Morrison and that girl. Maybe they're still alive. No, she's not. Jimmy Morrison's gone, too. Here's a note, Dave. Note? Typed and signed by Jimmy Morrison. Listen. Kathy was no good. She was poisoned and poisoned me. She really ran this whole package-stealing racket and tricked me into it. There's no chance of getting away. I don't want to, and I won't let her, so I'm going to help her escape the only way she can, by taking her with me, Jimmy Morrison. Oh. Well, it looks as if the girl was the big shot, Dave. Murder and suicide. This winds up the case nice and neat. Looks like it, Peters, and I... Wait a minute. The boy's holding the gun. Well, he was the suicide, according to the note. Well, the note may say so, but the evidence does not. This was no suicide, Peters. It was murder. Double murder. Back to David Harding in a moment. But first, when your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi Cola gets the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? This is David Harding. The deaths of Jimmy Morrison and Kathy Thomas, plus the simultaneous raids we made in Boston, Chicago, Detroit, and Philadelphia, would have ended our investigation of the parcel post theft ring, except for one small mistake. A mistake that turned an apparent suicide into murder. A mistake that led us straight to the criminal boss who tried to buy life insurance with death. For the exciting conclusion of this case, I invite you to listen Thursday night. Case of the Postal Pirate, file two on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Palmer Thompson and feature Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight. (laughs) 